Chapter 10 After Abimelech there arose to save Israel Tola the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, and he lived at Shamir in the hill country of Ephraim. And he judged Israel twenty-three years. Then he died and was buried at Shamir. After him arose Jair the Gileadite, who judged Israel twenty-two years. And he had thirty sons who rode on thirty donkeys, and they had thirty cities, called havoth Jair to this day, which are in the land of Gilead. And Jair died and was buried in Cammon. The people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and served the Baals and the Ashtaroth, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the Ammonites, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of the Philistines and into the hand of the Ammonites. And they crushed and oppressed the people of Israel that year. For eighteen years they oppressed all the people of Israel who were beyond the Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. And the Ammonites crossed the Jordan to fight also against Judah, and against Benjamin, and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was severely distressed. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you, because we have forsaken our God, and have served the Baals. And the Lord said to the people of Israel, Did I not save you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, from the Ammonites, and from the Philistines? The Sidonians also, and the Amalekites, and the Maonites, oppressed you, and you cried out to me, and I saved you out of their hand. Yet you have forsaken me and served other gods. Therefore I will save you no more. Go and cry out to the gods whom you have chosen. Let them save you in the time of your distress. And the people of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems good to you. Only please deliver us this day. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord, and he became impatient over the misery of Israel. Then the Ammonites were called to arms, and they encamped in Gilead. And the people of Israel came together, and they encamped at Mizpah. And the people, the leaders of Gilead, said one to another, Who is the man who will begin to fight against the Ammonites? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Chapter 11 Now Jephthah the Gileadite was a mighty warrior, but he was the son of a prostitute. Gilead was the father of Jephthah. And Gilead's wife also bore him sons. And when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, You shall not have an inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and lived in the land of Tob, and worthless fellows collected around Jephthah and went out with him. After a time the Ammonites made war against Israel, and when the Ammonites made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to bring Jephthah from the land of Tob, and they said to Jephthah, Come and be our leader, that we may fight against the Ammonites. But Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Did you not hate me and drive me out of my father's house? Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, That is why we have turned to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the Ammonites and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight against the Ammonites and the Lord gives them over to me, I will be your head. And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, The Lord will be witness between us if we do not do as you say. So Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and leader over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord at Mizpah. Then Jephthah... As they heard these things, he proceeded to tell a parable, because he was near to Jerusalem, and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. He said, therefore, A nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and then return. Calling ten of his servants, he gave them ten minas and said to them, Engage in business until I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over us. When he returned, having received the kingdom, he ordered these servants to whom he had given the money to be called to him, that he might know what they had gained by doing business. The first came before him, saying, Lord, your minna has made ten minas more. And he said to him, Well done, good servant. Because you have been faithful in a very little, you shall have authority over ten cities. And the second came, saying, Lord, your minna has made five minas. And he said to him, And you are to be over five cities. Then another came, saying, Lord, here is your minna, which I kept laid away in a handkerchief. For I was afraid of you, because you are a severe man. You take what you did not deposit, and reap what you did not sow. He said to him, I will condemn you with your own words, you wicked servant. You knew that I was a severe man, taking what I did not deposit, and reaping what I did not sow? Why then did you not put my money in the bank, and at my coming I might have collected it with interest? And he said to those who stood by, Take the minna from him, and give it to the one who has the ten minas. And they said to him, 
Lord, he has ten minutes. I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. But as for these enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them, bring them here and slaughter them before me. Hello and welcome to Bible Time. Today, Judges chapter 10 and chapter 11 through verse 11. And so God has raised judges to deliver the people of Israel from the oppression by other nations. And the first judge that God has raised was Orthanel, second Ehod, and third Shamgar, and fourth Deborah, and fifth judge was Gideon. And so we're going to talk about three more judges that God raised. The pattern of the Israelite is simple. The cycle is the death of a judge and they begin to sin against God and then they are oppressed by other nation and they cry out to God and the Lord raise a judge to bring peace. So now in chapter 10, we hear about God raising Torah as their sixth judge and to deliver the people. Of course, they went through all the cycle that we talked about and the seventh uh, judge was Jair, and when Jair died, Israelite quickly fall into sin again by worshiping false god of the people, and so they worship Baal. So God judged them, allow Ammonites to bring oppression, and the people of Israel were in distress and they were in oppression. So they call out the, to the Lord to deliver them, for they have sinned. The Lord told them. I have delivered them already from all this nation in the past. And because of your sin, you are now in that situation. Then God told the Israelite to ask the God that you're worshiping, the God of Baal, to deliver you, for you have been worshiping this gods. But they respond with removing all the idol worship and wait for God to deliver them. So God raised another judge named Jephthah. And Jephthah was a mighty warrior. He was born from his father Gilead, but he was born through a, a prostitute. So other half-brother kicked him out of the land um, because he was considered a legitimate son. So he lived in the place called Tob. Now the elders of Israel went to Tob to meet Jephthah and asked Jephthah to deliver them from the Ammonites with one condition and that is that the Jephthah will be the leaders of the Israel and so they agreed to it and that's where it ends in today's passage. Now Luke chapter 19 verse 11 through 27, Jesus was visiting Jerusalem for final days. Jesus told a parable of a noble man. He told them that the master gave 10 manas, the men as their money and to do the servant to do business to make profit as he was leaving for other kingdom. Now when he returned, he called all the servant to give an account of the money that he gave. The first servant came and said, I made 10 more manas and master was really pleased for he was faithful. The second servant made five more and still he was pleased. He trusted the servant. Now the third servant came and gave back exact amount that he received. And as he was giving, he says, I was afraid of losing it. So I hid it until your return. And here it is, 10 mana. Uh, master was really upset by this person for he has invested to his servant, but he did absolutely nothing with whatever he gave. And so he was severely punished. It is true that all of our talents and time and treasure that we have on this earth is an investment God has made in us. And God expects us to use it for his kingdom. There will be a time when God will ask you, what have you done with all that I have given you? And what God wants us to do is to use it to help people to know Jesus, help people to know God, and that we want to invest all of our talents, all of our time, all of our treasure to help other people to come to know Jesus Christ. And that what is what God expects of us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that, Lord, that we would not waste our time, we would not waste our treasure, or we would not waste our talent but we will use it for your glory to help other people to know you and that we will use it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.